Hello everybody and welcome to this, my third of three videos on the Canon EOS Digital Rebel XT. And in the first video we saw what all of this stuff is, in the second we talked about how to use it, and in this video we're going to go through the menu system here and talk about what all of this stuff, how to customize it. So if there is a specific thing that you're looking for, in the video's description there will be links to the different image menus, image menu 1 and image menu 2, playback, settings 1, and settings 2. And then in settings 2, there are custom functions. We'll go through all of these last, and there is a section at, in the index for the custom functions as well as each of the individual custom functions. So all you have to do is either, if you're at a desktop, click on the timestamp next to each one of the items in that index, or if you're on your phone, just scroll to the time index uh, for each of those items. We're going to start here with image menu 1. Image quality, your choices are raw, raw plus large JPEG, or different JPEG sizes. This is basically just a matter of what you want and can use. If you are shooting this camera to get the best images out of it, just shoot it in raw. If you're using Windows 10 or I would imagine anything newer in the future that comes out, Windows 10 has the ability to display the raw files as thumbnails, so there's no reason to shoot a raw plus JPEG. So you can get the best image quality and the most efficient use of your CF card by shooting just raw. If you're shooting only JPEGs because you're just going to be sharing them, you don't really want to do much of much editing, then you have different choices and the image sizes are shown up here. The steps here are coarse, which is lower resolution, and fine, which is higher resolution. And then it's just a matter of how much, how many uh, images can be saved on your CF card. Red eye on off. This will pulse your flash or not before taking a picture to prevent red eye in your subjects. Beep on or off. Beep is an audible beep that tells you when different things are happening. And generally, I recommend leaving this to off because it is less annoying to the people around you. Autofocus mode, we saw this in video two, but these are your three autofocus choices. Metering mode, we also saw this in video two, and these are your three metering choices. ISO speed, again, saw this in video two, and this is how you would get into it in this video to change in the menu to change your ISO. Image menu 2, auto exposure bracketing. We're going to hit OK and now we're going to use the command wheel to select how many stops of auto exposure bracketing we want. This will take three images, one underexposed, one proper, and one over. Two stops under proper and two stops over. And then turning it off. Flash exposure compensation will either overclock or underclock your flash to give you more light. This mostly applies to your on-camera flash. There are some of the Canon flashes that clip into the hot shoe, I believe can be overclocked, but again, like I said in the second video, I am not an expert on Canon flashes. White balance we saw in the second video, but this is how you would access it through the menu. White balance, shift, and bracketing. Okay, so this will allow you to adjust your specific white balance setting. So let's say you've set your white balance to tungsten because you're going to be shooting under tungsten lights. You're at a friend's party, they have a whole bunch of those really awesome, very orange or warm Edison lights above their patio, and your tungsten setting just isn't enough. Everything still looks orange. You can bracket here. At this bracketing adds more green or magenta. This adds more blue or amber. That's not it. There we go. You can also use the pad to adjust. So if you are still getting too much amber from the tungsten lights, you want to add more blue. Amber light, amber image, add more blue to counter. If you're in a hospital room that is completely lit by fluorescence, 
and no matter what you do, you're still getting a lot of green in your images, then what you want to do is add some magenta to counter it. With this setting, one of the things you can do is get a sheet of white paper or a white card, and you can set it down in your scene, and then you can adjust these settings until that white looks white to your eyes, and you can set your white balance to a custom setting for complex lighting. Custom white balance, what this does is you can take a picture of that white sheet or white card and then have your camera set the white balance to match that. This is really useful if you're doing something like a home studio where you're going to have the same lighting set up day after day for taking pictures for your Etsy shop or something like that. Color space, your choices are Adobe and sRGB. S is standard, leave it in sRGB unless you are super married to the Adobe ecosystem. For 99.9% .9 of users, sRGB is the choice you want to go with. It will be usable by more photo editing softwares and more uh, by your computer more readily. Parameter set. So your parameter headings are fixed and they're preset in the camera. So this allows you basically to adjust some of your specific image parameters. So increase contrast, increase or decrease, increase or decrease contrast, sharpness, saturation, and color tone. If you're here on contrast, that increases it and that decreases it. For all of these different parameters, you can have different sets that adjust images in different ways. Okay? Black and white creates a black and white image. Really, what you want to do is just set this to one that you can adjust, set everything neutral, and leave it this way. Your RAW files especially, but even your JPEGs, can be edited more effectively in post with whatever photo software you are using, even if it's a free downloadable one, than what this camera can do internally with its computer. This camera's computer is 14 to 15 years old as of this video's recording. Photo editing software is only getting more, more impressive with time. So just leave this to neutral and do your editing in post. Playback menu. Everything here applies to the way that the camera is going to play back your images when you review them. This protect allows you to protect individual images or folders so that they aren't deleted accidentally. Rotate will rotate images so that you can either so that you can see them without rotating the camera when uh, you're playing them back. Print order allows you to change the print order of your images. This only applies when the camera is directly plugged into your printer. Honestly, you're going to have better results if you take the CF card, plug it into your computer, and then print from your computer than if you print from your camera. Autoplay will autoplay a slideshow of your camera roll. And review time ranges between off, two, four, eight, and, and hold. So off means there's no instant review after you take a picture. Two, four, and eight are how many seconds each image will display after you take a picture. And hold means the image will display until you tell the camera not to display it. If you're looking to preserve your batteries, leave this as off. Settings menu one, auto power off. This is a matter of personal preference and battery preservation, how long you want the camera to stay on after you've pushed a button. One minute, two, four, eight, 15, or 30, or off. Off means that if you turn the camera on, it will stay on until the battery is deep discharged. I like 15, generally speaking, um, for recording videos. Five, in this case, four for just walking around. Auto-rotating is auto-rotating your screen based on the camera's orientation. Your LCD brightness, I have this jacked all the way up to make it a little bit easier for you to see the LCD in the video. If you're outside in full sun, it's good to have this very bright. If you're inside in a concert hall or something like that, it's a good idea to turn this all the way down. 
This is your date and time where you can adjust your date and time to whatever date and time it is when you're setting it. File numbering, continuous and auto reset. So continuous means that if you change CF cards, the numbering will continue. If you put 150 photos on your CF card and you change it, the next CF card will start at image 151. Auto reset will go back to image one when you put in a new CF card. Now, the risk with auto reset is that if you are taking four CF cards worth of images and dumping them into the same folder on your computer, you could overwrite images on your computer. So generally speaking, continuous is a better option because it has a higher max number and it will help prevent you from overwriting images on your computer. Format formats the CF card. Shoot without card allows you to shoot with the card or not. So if you have it to on, your camera will take pictures without a CF card. It won't save them, but it will take them. With off, your camera will not fire if there's no CF card. So if you want to use this and set it to off, that's a good way to just pick up your camera and really quickly determine whether or not you have a CF card in there, because if you don't, it won't take a picture. Settings menu number two, language. You have all of these different languages that you can choose from. Definitely a great prank to play on your friends to change it to a language that they don't know. Video system, NTSC or PAL. Now this video camera does not record video. This is only for the video out port here on the side. So if you're in an area that uses NTSC like North America or PAL like the UK, just set it to that and you can then use your, your camera as a video camera that communicates with that different uh, video system. This is communication through your um, mini USB port. Realistically, this on, doesn't matter. Just set this to whatever you want it to be because you should be transferring data from your CF card directly to your computer. That's gonna be a whole lot faster than using a mini USB one cable. This is a USB one port to communicate with your computer. Come back to custom functions in a minute. Clearing your settings, you have three options. Cancel, which is what I'm gonna do if, unless I mess this up. Clear all camera settings. That clears everything you have set into the camera. Everything we've looked at in the menu settings, all of your custom functions will be restored to factory defaults. Clear all custom functions only erases the custom functions and sets them back to factory defaults. Cancel. Sensor cleaning. What this does is this will lock up the sensor, assume, or lock up the mirror, assuming that you have enough battery, so that you can clean the sensor. I didn't bring my brush today, but what you want to do to clean the sensor is click OK. Now you can see the sensor is accessible. And then holding this with the sensor facing the ground, you would take a DSLR brush and then just brush any dirt off of the sensor. Put your lens back on. Turn off the camera. Actually, turn off the camera before you put your lens back on. You want to minimize the amount of time that the sensor is open to getting more dust on it. And that is how you clean your sensor. And then here is your firmware version. So if you have firmware version 1.0.3, that's the final release of firmware for this camera, and that means you have the most up-to-date version. If you have 1.00.01 or 0.2, then it, it would be a good idea to upgrade it. I'm not 100% certain that Canon still has this firmware on their website, but if you can find it, it's worth upgrading just for the improvements uh, over the previous versions of the firmware. Next thing we're gonna do is go into the custom functions and we're gonna go through all of the different custom functions of which there are 10, nine, and um, talk about what they are and, how, how, and uh, how to use them. So you can see there is a list of all the custom functions and then there's a little line underneath the one that we are set at. So custom function one, if you have your manual, or a PDF of it. Page 148 contains more information about each one of these. 
and zero, you can see there's some ones in one zero, one three zero 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 one zero. Zero is the default on all of them, I believe. And so you can look across the bottom and see which ones are changed to be not the default. All right, first one is custom function zero one is the set button cross pad functions. So zero is, no, so what we do is we use the up and down button here to get to them. And then I believe it's set, yeah. And then we use the set button to choose the option. Zero is normal. With one, the set button, which is this right here, adjusts your image quality, which would be switching between RAW and JPEG sizes. Two allows you to adjust your image parameters. That's what we looked at earlier where, earlier where I said set them all to neutral and do your editing in RAW. That allows you to pull up your parameter menu to adjust contrast, sharpness, things like that. This means set is playback, which is the same function as this button, this button right here. It's a duplicate function, so it generally would say this is a redundant feature. Four is you can use your autofocus, your, your, your cross pad as your autofocus point selection, uh, autofocus frame selection um, functionality, or back to normal. Whichever one you want to use, personal preference and shooting style. Custom function two is your long exposure noise reduction and your options there are on and off. So I'm gonna recommend leaving this to off. The reason being that modern PCs can do a better job of noise reduction than the computer that's built into this camera. Custom function three is your flash sync in aperture value or aperture priority mode. That's AV on the command dial, or on the mode dial right here. Zero is automatic. One is fixed at one two hundredth of a second. So the difference here is that in automatic, if your camera needs a one sixtieth of a second shutter speed for proper exposure, it can do that and still trigger a flash in aperture priority mode. Now, remember this only applies to AV mode. So if it needs a five second exposure, it can do that and trigger the flash. With option one, the shutter speed will always and only be one two hundredth of a second if you're using a flash in aperture priority mode. Matter of subjects that you're shooting, preference, image style, things like that. Um, if you're only doing daylight fill flash, this is the one you want to use. If you're shooting nighttime portraits where you want to illuminate your subject and have the background be illuminated, this is the one that you want to use. Custom function four is your shutter button and auto exposure lock button. So this has four options, zero, one, two, and three. With option zero, your autofocus and auto exposure lock are done with your shutter button. And now what that means is when you have to press the shutter button, it locks your focus and it locks the exposure setting. So the downside to that is that if you lock your focus and your shutter speed and aperture at the same time, and then your subject moves into different lighting, you'll have an improper exposure. With option one, your auto exposure is locked with the shutter button and the asterisk button back here controls your autofocus. So you only get to autofocus with asterisk and then your auto exposure settings are like aperture value, shutter priority or program mode are locked in place when you push the shutter button halfway down. With option two, your autofocus lock with is autofocus lock with shutter, no AE lock, exposure is shut, triggered when the shutter triggers. <laughs> Ugh, that was a mouthful. Okay, so basically what this does is it locks your focus when the image is taken or when the shutter is, the shutter button is half depressed. It doesn't lock your auto exposure at any point until the image is taken. So option two is generally gonna be your best because you can lock in your autofocus by half depressing the shutter button and then your exposure when the photo is taken. 
Option three is auto exposure and autofocus are performed with the shutter button, but exposure again is shut, triggered when the shutter trips. So uh, I tend to shoot with this one because I think this is the best for most shooting settings. Custom function five is your autofocus assist beam. Zero is on, one is does not, e uh, okay. So there are three options here, zero, one, and two. Zero is the autofocus assist beam on your camera, which is on the front of it, will turn on. Option one is there will be no autofocus assist beam, period, end of story, ever from anything. Option two is that if you have one of the Canon flashes that has an autofocus assist beam on it, it will then this camera can use that flash's autofocus assist beam, but not the autofocus assist beam on the camera. So basically a matter of personal preference and your shooting style and where and when you're gonna be shooting. Custom function six is your exposure increments. Third and a half stop, those are the two options. I'm gonna recommend one third stop increments because this is an older camera. The closer you can get to a proper exposure, the better, even if you're shooting in RAW. The RAW file data and the, the way that they were encoded now 14 to 15 years ago was not as sophisticated as it is now. And the amount of image recovery compared to what modern ca cameras can do is not as good. So if you set this to one third increments, you can get more out of your RAW images. Set, uh, fun custom function seven is mirror lockup. Disable or enable. Okay, so mirror lockup is a function that will raise the mirror before the image is taken. With this, you push the shutter button to raise the mirror and then push it again to take the photo. This is really good only when you need to eliminate mirror shake. So if you're on a tripod and you're gonna take a picture of a waterfall, that's a long exposure, or a star trails, that's a long exposure, or a macro, that really requires very stable image use, you want to use mirror lockup. You don't want to use this as just general walk around because you'd be pushing the shutter button twice, once to lock up the mirror and once to take the picture. And in that time between the mirror locking up and taking the picture, you wouldn't be able to see what you're taking a picture of. So with this also, if you're going to be using mirror lockup, you can use this with your self timer so that you push the shutter button once to lock up the mirror, push the sh shutter button a second time to start the self timer countdown, and then you can know that there's not gonna be any image shake at the beginning of the photo because all of the shaking from the mirror and you pushing the shutter button will have worked themselves out of your tripod system. So that's really one, one really powerful use of mirror lockup, but it's not something that you wanna have set just as a matter of course. Function eight, is your ETTL2, which is flash metering. Option one is averaging, option two is evaluative. So the basic difference here is that with evaluative, the camera is going to be better at avoiding bright and dark spots in a scene when you use a flash. This only applies to flash use with your camera. With average, what happens is the camera will take the entire scene and come up with an average reading, just like a 1950s or 60s or 70s light meter would. And that can lead to bright and dark spots in a scene with a flash use. So matter of personal preference and what you're taking photos of and uh, the type of flash you're using and things like that. But um, play around with this if you're really into using flashes and see which one gives you the better results. Custom function nine, which is our last custom function, is shutter curtain sync. Okay, so shutter curtain sync is first curtain is option zero. Oops. Second curtain is option one. Now, what this means, if you remember from video two, talked about the first curtain opening and then the flash triggering and then the second curtain closing. That is option zero. With option one, the first curtain opens and then the flash triggers immediately before the second curtain closes. 
So this doesn't make a difference if you're using 1 200th of a second. It makes zero difference at all. If you're using a 60th of a second, it makes zero difference which setting this is. But if you're using bulb, or if you're using 20 seconds, this does make a difference. Okay, so let's say you've got your camera set up over here, and you're gonna use bulb, where you push the shutter button down, the first curtain opens, and then you release it, and the second curtain closes. With first curtain travel, you push the shutter button down, the first curtain opens, flash triggers, whole sensor is exposed to light until you release the shutter button. With second curtain, you push the shutter button down, first curtain opens, you release the shutter button, the, the flash triggers, and then the second curtain closes. So let's say that you have this set to second curtain. Push the shutter button down, you have your buddy jog through the scene wearing a bunch of lights on his ankles and wrists or whatever, and when he gets here, you release it, flash triggers, you have your buddy illuminated, as well as lights coming off of where his ankles and wrists were, showing the movement of his feet and hands. That's one creative use of second curtain sync that you could do fairly easily, and that's an example of how that would be used. And that's it. We've gone through all of the custom functions on the Canon EOS Digital Rebel XT. Old camera, but still very capable and definitely suitable for being a first camera to learn off of because it is easy to use, it's easy to learn with, very lightweight, and uh, very affordable now. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.